Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world. I am you, magnificent, wonderful, individual human being. Today, I would like to speak about giving or infusing your communication with spirit and enthusiasm. Well, life and vigor, vitality, upliftment, you know, joy, any kind of feelings that might be warm, we try to reflect that in our language. It is a practice. So it is something we immerse ourselves in every day, sharpen, polish our communication, bringing about a certain understanding and a sense for word and language so that we can truly bring a feeling to our words and also, well, hold the attention of those we are trying to speak to and so on. By becoming good at these things and also at the same time becoming good at observation, you can also be able to be flexible and adjust yourself and to truly, well, not only be able to speak with enthusiasm, but also feel and act and observe the world around you with wonder and reverence. Because you know that despite the outer physical manifestation, like they say in the Eastern, is illusion, it is Maya, it is still a kind of beautiful Maya. It is still divine creation. And it is, it gives a sense of warmth and joy and morality to study it through spiritual, through a spiritual lens. It is a sense of responsibility and devotion. I certainly would not just brush in into the courtroom of a spiritual high, a high court and just scream and be, uh, and be rowdy and undisciplined. No, when we are sitting in the presence of higher beings, it is important to hold a steady sense of dignity and respect, reverence. They are higher beings that have gone through a lot of development, just like us, of course, but they have gone through even more and are both one, two and three steps higher than we are. Angels, archangels, archai, which are the ones we are the closest to on this earthly development. And, well, one of the tricks to bring enthusiasm to your language is first and foremost to find something you long and burn for, something you are passionate for, and to direct your, uh, your passionate feelings that comes from the astral realm, trying to purify them and lift them up to the moral, and then work upon what you have chosen. Because when you have chosen something, you can bring life, vigor to it. You know that you enjoy what you do, you love what you do, and hence the work you do becomes lovely. It, is, it should be enjoyable to develop and to unfold one's own inner soul and spiritual life. It should not be a drag. If, you, if it is a drag and a hassle and just trials and blah, then it is not done correctly. You see, with true devotional, reverent feelings, it is kind of impossible to hold such feelings of jadedness because we know better. The spiritual world is so such a sublime, ever-changing, flowing world that has so many events and occurrences happening that despite having barely anything happening in the outer materialistic sense and around us, Within us, there is a whole world occurring. And it is about connecting to that again. And that is where our spirit lies. Our spirit is the active within our soul and spirit. Our ego that brings consciousness to our body, to our life, to our practices, to our love, to other human beings. The more we practice, the more we work and weave into the etheric, etheric body, that means habits, that means actions we 
normally do every day from day to day, the more we change and shape ourselves. It's the same with the astral, which is our longing, passions, pleasures, uh, sorrows and longings and joys, instincts and so on. By transforming it, lifting it up, the human astral that you have been given, the astral body, to the Devakan, lower Devakan and to the higher Devakan, we get a sense of morality that everything, the highest striving a human being can, can go, go for in this, this present day and age is a sense of morality, a true, a true feeling, oh sorry, for it, where you feel pain or joy based on moral actions and where you see beauty or ugliness based on moral actions. And it is about bringing that into our reality. We do have the seeds for it. And by being able to grab, grasp onto these seeds, you with the Son, the Christ principle, not yet I, the Christ worketh in me, grow that seed. The more that seed grow, the stronger a foundation you gain. This foundation is built upon spiritual strength. It is built upon experience. It is built upon living within the spiritual present moment of things. The more you are enthusiastic and loving, loving it, the more life and enthusiasm you infuse your communication with. That is just facts because your communication reflects your soul and spirit. Your body will do too over time. Of course, th this body will deteriorate over the over the years as we live as we live our life. But your soul and spirit becomes ever stronger, so that your inner faculties can be explored, so that we can, well, weave into it the good, the good that we wish to see in the future. And it is kind of a sacrificial work because we do strive for something that does not appear visible yet in the world as a true reality yet. But thought as it is today wasn't visible either in the Roman Greco-Roman times. They had to work actively with that thinking, with that type of thinking faculties. Today it is normal. What we work upon today will in the future be normal. That is how it works. So this work is for everyone and for humanity for the future. And the joy of working towards such grand aspirations, even though we might only be able to do a tinsy bit, we still make an effort, you know? We try the best we can with what we have. We have our limitations when it comes to our experiences in life and might makes have might makes us have certain flaws and weaknesses but that should not stop us if nothing else it should highlight how necessary it is to truly do this work because there have been there is now a time to truly get a grasp of faith love hope Certain things, when you begin this journey, has to be taken on faith at first. But by that faith, you will be shown over time, through experiences, through really understanding, through cognition, through consciousness, feeling, and a sense of beauty, love. By truly get senses of these things, you can reflect that in your language. Of course, our language is pretty mundane and very much tailored to outer physical life. So it's not that easy to describe inner spiritual life. Thinking, feeling, willing, the physical, etheric, astral and ego, our, uh, our consciousness soul, our, our mind soul and our sentient soul, all of these. And then you have, and, and, and then we can start on the planets and constellations and so on. And then we have the Saturn, Sun, Moon, and now Earth development, Jupiter development, Venus development, and at the end, Vulcan development. 
All of these reflect in on each other, but it is different areas of the whole reality to see from. You can see from any of these lenses or from the whole of all of them and to try to, ex to view the whole hierarchy in its wonderful choir of things. But it is all about being creative using your imagination actively to truly tap into these realities because they are realities they are reflected you when you use your senses to observe outside you truly connect the spiritual science with reality you are not led astray by abs abstract theories you truly are connecting directly with what is around you what you sense what you feel what you experience without well falling to delusions and illusions. We anchor ourselves into our being so that we can comprehend and understand the world around us, the individual, ourselves, and the occurrences and events and happenings that is happening and weaved into our life from day to day, from moment to moment, year to year. And see the changes that is occurring within us from a certain point in time to a certain point in time <laughs> that is, or uh, or based on the age you're in and so on but it is never you can never uh, it is never in vain to start this work no matter what building and growing those seeds will help no matter what it is never in vain as good paul said it is all about getting a sense of that enjoyment of the work, you know? The work is magnificent. And it is all about having a sense of that future Philadelphia. Community of sibling love. Where we truly can do good together. Weave into this world. Creative, uplifting, warm and, and light-filled creations of our communication, our feelings, making our feelings as pure and as good as possible, shed what, does, what isn't healthy and good for us anymore, and work upon our being through practice, through gaining new in interests by directing our longings and passions towards the right areas of life. You know what the right areas of life for you are. You must trust so, as I said, something must be taken on faith at first. But it is all about getting a sense for that prompting. That prompting that is, many are called, but not many will answer. It is a reality. But for you to get a sense of yourself, what comes out of your heart, out of your inner thoughts, and your will impulses, your longings, what you do aspire to, what you wish to bring out to this world, and what can you acquire through study, practice, meditation, and dedication. It requires a certain resolve, a strong foundation of not directly zeal, but it requires a certain enthusiasm, is the best way to describe it. We should not extinguish that enthusiasm it really should be something <sighs> you know that is when you know that you have chosen something that brings you life if you were to be taken out of what you have chosen you would slowly wither away but since you have found something that you can burn for you will live you are sprouting you are blooming you are polishing and developing and deepening your craft and your mastering mastery and you chose so in freedom you know that is what's important and then you chose it in goodness in morality in love oh it is so important to hold st strong to the heart despite the world being apparently cold and dark and full of despair and evil it is important to still have faith, love and hope and work goodness into this world. That is the only way we can see goodness in this world, by being an example, by doing good and not being afraid of doing so, despite everyone even making fun of you. 
crowning with thorns is kind of what that stage is. You have to be content with, well, being thrown swords and daggers at constantly, but still stick to the love. Because it is important. It is, the love is the highest reality a human being can strive for. Morality, true, true love. In its highest, highest sense. And I will leave you with this today. May Father, Holy Spirit, Michael, uh, Christ, Michael, higher hierarchy, ancient masters of all, ancestors from every incarnation, bless, protect, guide, and love you on your beautiful, wonderful, unique path to your deepening of awakening, understanding, and the sense of this dream. The stream, not dream. Ast, st, <laughs> stream. Love you. Thank you so much. May you be, may you be safe. Love you. Goodbye.